Ed Schultz News and Commentary with you at WeGotEd.com, RawStory.com, and RingOfFireRadio.com. The Iowa tap dance continues. That's exactly what it is. We're going to talk this morning about Scott Walker, about how he is uh, kind of lost in the shuffle. He's bland. He's boring. His radical lies about his record in Wisconsin just don't even seem to be connecting. We'll get to all of that. Also, how Hillary Clinton is defending her email situation. But in the midst of this entire campaign, there are diminishing voices for American workers. Very little attention was paid to what China did last week. All the Wall Streeters are looking at China saying, well, you know, they're just having kind of a downturn. Their stock market's having a hard time, and they're just playing with their currency a little bit so they can bring their economy back. Leo Gerard wrote an op-ed that appeared in Huffington Post on Monday, which should catch the eye of every American. China protects its workers. America doesn't bother. Now, that is a catchy title. It's short, it's to the point, and it is the situation. He writes, confronted with a dire situation, a world power last week took strong action to secure its domestic jobs and manufacturing. That was China, not the United States. If you've paid attention to any of the work I've been doing in the last year on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Trade Promotional Authority, you know exactly where I stand on all of this and how China has been the culprit for years. The United States Senate has had a conversation about currency manipulation, but they haven't done a damn thing about it. Currency manipulation violates free market principles. Republicans don't care. They allow China to do whatever they want to do. The nation's economy is cooling off, he writes, talking about China. Its stock market just crashed, and its economic powerhouse exports declined a substantial 8.3% in July, down to $195 billion from $213 billion the previous July. That's a hell of a swing. So now what we're going to do is get involved in a trade agreement which is going to benefit China more than it will American workers. And in the meantime, we're talking about Donald Trump and what he's going to do with immigration. What should be on the radar screen is what American workers are facing right now. Joining us this morning is Leo Gerard. He is the president of United Steelworkers International, and he has been bullseyed on this issue for years. He is one of the very few people that has consistently pointed to what China has done to our economy and how in this election cycle there's very little attention being paid to it. Mr. Gerard, good to have you with us this morning. Good to be with you. Where does this leave American politicians when these kinds of things are happening? What's the political landscape here for us to turn this around? Well, look at it. It's a, it's a really good question, and I have a sad answer. Uh, American politicians uh, have no concept of what the hell is going on. And, and the few that do are unable to move the agenda. And I don't want to leave the impression that we don't have some good solid allies like Sherrod Brown and Elizabeth Warren and, and people like that, uh, Bernie Sanders. But the the majority of the Democrats and the overwhelming almost unanimity on Republican side ignore this stuff. The, the fact of the matter is exactly what the headline said in the blog we did. The fact is that China was losing its competitive advantage. So what they did was they adjusted their currency downward so that they would have an advantage in their exports, and there'd be penalty for anybody that's trying to import into the U into uh, China, and uh, we just need to be yelling and screaming about this. And there's a reason that Donald Trump and uh, Bernie Sanders are sucking all the air up out of because they're they're literally. I mean, Trump is is you know Trump is Trump, but he's talking about and Bernie Sanders is talking about the issues that people are angry about. They they see that China's economy is going down. China acts on behalf of its economy and on behalf of its workers. It's a totalitarian state. Uh, here we have a democracy that sees what's happening to its workers, and they ignore it. So there's a lot for us to be angry about here. The report, Manufacturing Job Loss, Trade Not Productivity is its culprit, is something that came out recently from the Economic Policy Institute. It's detailing how the United States has lost millions of manufacturing jobs in the last 15 years. 
And no one seems to be talking about or coming up with a formula on what's going to reverse this trend. Uh, the nuts and bolts of who we are and what we do is changing. And the only people that are, 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 are standing up and, and, and making this case are those in organized labor, or do I have that wrong? No, I think it's uh, it's, it's it's totally accurate. We have some other allies. I, you know, we've got some allies on some of the issues in the environmental movement. We've got allies in other progressive movements, the civil rights movement. African American men and women get hit very, very hard uh, when their jobs are gone. Uh, women lose a lot of jobs. Uh, so that the, there's there's some other supporting structure there. But the folks that are taking the fight are the the trade unions, and in particular our union. And we filed 27 trade cases in the first six months of the year. Uh, we win, you know, 9 out of 10. And the reason we win 9 out of 10 is they cheat. All we need to do is gather the facts, put them in. Now, the problem with that is it takes 18 months, two years. I mean, a quick case might take 15 months. And uh, during that time, we're getting beat up by cheaters. I mean, I don't know if you've seen that, uh, again, uh, there was a show on 60 Minutes on Sunday uh, what they call lumber liquidators, that uh, was bringing in uh, flooring, and it was uh, laced with formaldehyde from China, and so they had to pull their stuff off the shelves. Well, we can make we can make that here. We represent workers in the forest industry, but they're trying to get it at the you know regardless of of the rules. So there'll be a trade case on that. There'll be a trade case on on paper. There'll be a trade case on aluminum. There'll be a trade case on tire and rubbers. And then uh, we'll do all of that stuff. We'll win. By the time we'll have won, we'll have lost thousands of jobs. And then the Chinese will find well, another way to cheat. It seems like the political system isn't set up for us to address China manipulating their currency, that this is going to continue any time they have some sort of a downturn economically or any time they want to adjust their market. But the fact is, is that there doesn't seem to be, number one, the political will or the political mechanism for us to address this. What about that? Well, I think you're absolutely right, and there's, there's a lack of what I would call economic patriotism. You know, we're prepared to uh, have, call all kinds of people patriots, but where's the economic patriotism? Uh, you take on uh, currency. The currency bill was passed by a big margin in the Senate when they actually knew that it would never get out of the House. Then it was passed by a big majority in the House when they knew it wouldn't get out of the Senate. Uh, now we could get it passed if both of them stood up and became economic patriots. We could whack China for its currency manipulation. We could set up tougher enforcement rules. We should have a government that enforces the rule, not l having to wait for the labor movement to bring cases forward. That, uh, you know, it's be like putting up a stop sign or a stoplight and telling the world that there's a stoplight there. And it's, you know, we hope that you'll follow it, but uh, if not, we won't be around to enforce it. Well, we've got rules of trade, and they never seem to be enforced unless we bring a case forward. Now, and you then, wrote that China and pointed out that China lowered the value of its currency for three consecutive days last week for a total of 4.4%, and pointed out that that's the largest decline in two decades. Yeah, uh, well... So... What, what, does that, what does that mean in the long haul for us? Well, what it means in the long haul is, first of all, China has been um, responding to uh, minimal pressure by saying, well, that uh, they're in the process of lowering their or uh, raising their currency, letting it, the market uh, set the currency rate. And it inched up maybe one half of one percent once or twice. Um, and then as soon as the economy starts to be in trouble, they lower their common their their currency by a huge margin. That's a huge margin, and what it does is it's very simple. It penalizes any imports that are trying to make their way into China, and it gives their exports out of China a huge a huge advantage. And so, their stuff becomes cheaper in America, and our stuff becomes more expensive in China. And and that, I'm not sure if I said this before on your show, but uh, two hundred and I mean two thousand and thirteen. The Chinese said their objective was to have a hundred billion, with a B, dollars of auto parts in the North American market by the end of 2016. If they managed to get a hundred billion dollars of auto parts into the market 
in the supply chain, uh, it will eviscerate the North American supply chain for the auto industry. Uh, we push the, the Commerce Department, we push USTR, uh, we pushed a number of people to respond to that. We tried to file a trade case on auto parts, but we couldn't define what an auto part was. Is it a seat belt? Is it a muffler? Is it a tire rim? What is it? So we did more investigation, and with the help at the time of Gene Sperling from the White House, uh, with the Economic uh, Office of the White House, Gene found out that China had an export, sub export subsidy for every one of their auto parts. So we proceeded to put pressure on USTR and Commerce to respond to the export subsidy that China has on its auto parts. That's now almost three years, and they're at what they call the consultative stage. Well, they can consult till the cows come home, and we'll end up losing our jobs. So we yeah. need to gain. I'm going to, I'm going to be raising this with uh, the White House and USTR and Commerce that uh, they got to quit consulting and start acting. United Steelworkers International President Leo Gerard with us here on the Ed Schultz News and Commentary Internet Broadcast. Leo, good to have you with us. Keep up the fight. Great work. You can find this op-ed on Huffington Post. It's entitled, China Protects Its Workers, America Doesn't Bother. Leo, thanks so much. Thank you, Ed, and uh, you're, you're, you're our voice, and uh, we appreciate all the hard work you do standing up for workers as well. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to a busy schedule this fall. No question about it. Out and about being an activist for workers. Thanks, Leo. We'll do it again. Thank, thank, be careful of those big Canadian fish. They bite back. We got a 41-incher yesterday, although I wasn't uh. in that boat, but I should have been. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks, Leo. Bye. Communication Workers of America, Alliance for America Manufacturing, BioGreen, Clean and the I Save team bring you this podcast. Scott Walker trying to be relevant on the Iowa tap dancing stage as the campaign season continues. That's next. Stay with us. We're right back. Hey, folks, you've heard me talk about BioGreen Clean. I'm going to show you right now on my airplane just how tough this is. I want you to keep in mind. Chemical-free, 100% plant-derived, biodegradable. It is the safest cleaner that you can get, and it's the most effective. Go to our website, wegotahead.com, or go to biogreenclean.com. Triple W dot B-I-O-G-R-E-E-N-C-L-E-A-N, and order today. We perpetuate a culture of crime all the way from Wall Street right down to the Main Street in our hometowns. It's worse than it has been since FDR took control of the problem and said we can't count on industry taking care of the American labor. They probably have already engaged in some type of criminal cover-up. And the law prohibits the government from even doing anything about it. Catch America's lawyer Mike Papantonio on YouTube at youtube.com slash goleftv. From the steel mills of Pennsylvania, to the auto factories of Michigan, to the modern makers movement, manufacturing makes our nation great. I'm Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We bring business and labor together to advocate for policies that everyone can agree on. Together, we can strengthen manufacturing and create good paying American jobs. Help us keep it made in America. It's time to continue our conversation about mechanical insulation. Mechanical insulation is for the piping systems in our nation's commercial and industrial facilities. Facility owners are burning up billions of dollars through the lack of mechanical insulation on these piping systems. 
Call the iSave team. Insulation saves America valuable energy, and this team of energy conservation specialists is shovel-ready to save you money. Visit iSaveTeam.org to have a specialist give your plant an energy audit. Subscribe to the Ed Schultz podcast today. Simply log on to iTunes, search for Ed Schultz, and click the subscribe button to have the show delivered to your preferred listening device daily, free of charge. Rate and review the podcast to tell us how we're doing. More details at wegoted.com. Communication Workers of America bring you this production. CWA-Union.org, their website filled with information about the battle that's taking place for democracy in this election season. They are organizing to certainly help workers' bargaining rights across this country, cwa-union.org. The interesting twist that's unfolding in this political season in its infancy is what is happening in Iowa and the tap dance that's being done by some of these Republicans trying to get camera time, PT. Scott Walker is getting lost in the shuffle. And people are figuring out he's bland, he's boring, he's got a radical agenda, and he lies about his record in Wisconsin. But overall, the Republicans haven't figured out that the health care law, the Affordable Health Care Act, which they call Obamacare, is widely popular, especially with the people who have been affected by it. And Republicans have not come up with any other solution other than to say that they want to get rid of it. And Scott Walker is still stuck on that. These days, I'm not just frustrated with the president and with the Democrats in Washington. I'm frustrated with the Republican leadership in Washington as well. You see, they told us during the last election that if we just elected a Republican Senate, the leadership out there would put, would put a bill to repeal Obamacare on the desk of the president. It's August. We're still waiting for that measure. Okay. But that's not what the country wants. In fact, all of the things that Walker is pushing poll in the negative with the American people. The majority of Americans don't want Obamacare repealed. They want universal health care. That polls into the 70s. Walker thinks a radical agenda of what he's done in Wisconsin is what the country wants. You see, we, had, we inherited a $3.6 billion budget deficit, and we fixed it. We cut taxes by $2 billion today. Property taxes are lower today than they were before we took office. We defunded Planned Parenthood more than four years ago, long before those videos out there. We took on welfare reform and said, if you're able to work as an adult in our state, you got to be enrolled in job training and be able to pass a drug test before you get a welfare check in the state of Wisconsin. We want to make it easy to vote, but hard to cheat. We require a photo ID to vote in the state of Wisconsin. Well, he wants to drug test welfare recipients. That's red meat to psycho folks. Defending Planned Parenthood is not what the majority of Americans want. He's lying about his record about cutting taxes and reversing a budget deficit. And voter ID, we know exactly what that is. That's purging the polls and, of course, keeping minorities away from the ballot box. That's really what the conservatives want to do. But yet Walker just can't resonate as he continues to fade in the polls. I just love it. In the meantime, the email controversy surrounding Hillary Clinton defended on Iowa Public Radio by the candidate over the weekend. I never sent nor received any classified email, nothing marked uh, classified. And I think this will all sort itself out. And in a way, um, it's kind of an interesting insight into uh, how the government operates. Because if I had not asked for my emails all to be made public, none of this would have been in the public arena. But I want people to know what we did. I'm proud of the four years uh, that I uh, was Secretary of State. So I, I know this is all just going to you know, work itself out as we go forward. Going to work itself out as the FBI continues to investigate. And now there are reports that there are over 300 emails that could be termed classified information, although Hillary Clinton reiterates that she never sent any classified information with a declarative statement. So clearly there's a conflict here. And if Hillary Clinton doesn't know what classified information is, 
why does she want to be president of the United States, or how could anyone have any controversy or any confidence in her at all that she'd be able to handle it? On Fox News on Sunday, it was a very interesting uh, uh, exchange between Governor Chris Christie and also the host, who said this to Christie, and Christie responding, saying that when he was U.S. attorney, he made it clear that you could only use the government email. Her arrogance is breathtaking. It's breathtaking. Mrs. Clinton, this is not about politics. Why don't you just answer this question? Why would you have an, oh, your own private email server? I worked for the federal government for seven years as U.S. attorney. It was made clear to all of us when we walked in the door. Official business is done on your official email account. Mm -hmm. So this is not about politics. Answer the question. All this other stuff, it's the typical approach of the Clintons, where when they're in trouble, they blame everybody yeah, else. You I'll tell you this. There's certainly enough that there should be an investigation, and that we have to get to the bottom of it. I'll tell you. I'll tell you as a former U.S. attorney, that there's no question in my mind that if there's classified information on there, she's in trouble. That is the soundbite, I think, that the Clinton camp is going to have to respond to. Because speaking as a former U.S. attorney, I think that Chris Christie is correct when he says that. The FBI ain't messing around, and neither is the Inspector General. This is the Ed Schultz Internet Broadcast, brought to you by the Communication Workers of America, Alliance for American Manufacturing, BioGreen Clean, and the iSave team. We're back tomorrow.